Hello again, and welcome back. With the Gamma Dracona system secure, a task force of Terran and the Sudan scientists is now examining the subspace portal. At this point, the scientists have ruled out the possibility the device is of Shivan origin. Dr. Mita Hargrove, leader of the research team, has issued a report of his preliminary findings. An excerpt of this report follows. The subspace portal is unlike any Shivan construction we have yet encountered. Though Shivans demonstrate considerable diversity as a species, all Shivan technology possesses certain distinctive properties. None is present in the subspace device, which means we must look elsewhere for the portal's origin. We do know that the device is very, very old, on the order of several thousand years. I did inadvertently figure out why the portal was red in the previous mission, or rather the portal itself. It's because I had the derelict's um, mission packs in, um, in the same folder. And the derelict, it uses, it uses uh, the portal, the subspace portal model with a red skin. This is for a reason later explained, or explained later in derelict, but that's not important right now. The field generated by the interlocking movement of the portal's components creates a subspace vortex connecting one part of the universe to another. Dr. Hargrove theorizes that whoever built this device may have used it to stabilize a jump node on the verge of collapse. Dr. Hargrove is correct. This technology is a tremendous discovery. Now, once again, yeah, well, not once again, but if you haven't figured it out, this is the same portal that we were fighting around in the previous mission that they're talking about. By constructing our own portal, we might be able to reopen the soul jump node in Delta Serpentis. Since the destruction of the Lucifer caused the node to collapse 32 years ago, Earth has remained isolated from the GTVA. We might also be able to stabilize subspace nodes that are currently too volatile for travel, thus creating routes to systems previously unexplored. This, once again, happens to be a reference to Free Space 1, the whole Lucifer collapsing the soul jump node, which I believe is the second time this is mentioned in this story. But the game likes to toss these references here and there, like I think I've mentioned already. Our military operation will focus on what lies on the other side of the subspace portal. Let's determine where the node leads, the extent of the Sheevan presence there. Above all, we must prevent the Sheevans from returning to Gamma Draconis. Because the portal will remain active while the research team studies the technology, our systems are vulnerable to attack. Allied Command has deemed this an acceptable risk given the potential benefits. This is interesting to note. As we proceed all over the story, think about those words. Is this really an acceptable risk or not? Le leaving this portal open. Or leaving this subspace portal, whatever we want. Yeah. At 1540 hours, the GTD Aquitaine entered the subspace portal in Gamma Draconis and jumped to our current position. We have entered a nebula, a vast and dense ionized field, and possibly the remnant of a supernova. We have traveled farther than any Terrans in the history of subspace travel. The nebula has severely limited the Aquitaine's long-range sensors. We are deploying our fighter wings to explore the immediate vicinity and determine the extent of the enemy presence. Each fighter squadron will deploy a flight of four wings. This is a little interesting. If you click on the IOTA icon and you don't hold the mouse button down, you will click, uh, the game will count you as clicking the, this uh, button that will remove the, this little window, and so you'll open it and close it right away. It's a little weird. Alpha, Zeta, Iota, and Kappa will patrol a series of four waypoints. Zeta Wing will lead this sortie, so follow Zeta 1, and do not stray. Be advised the nebula could interfere with your onboard systems. The ionized field will compromise your sensors even within combat range. So, okay. Our mission is to patrol the nebula with Zeta Wing. Now, that sounds simple, right? But if we've been paying attention recently to recent missions, 
It'll just never that simple. It's never that simple. There's always something else, so let's keep a lookout for that. Ship selection, we're stuck with a Herc 2 as usual, so whatever. Now, the weapon loadout, why am I giving her a Prometheus R? This is silly. I'm also noticing that there's no Harpoon or Hornet missile, so I'm stuck with a Rock Eye and a Tempest again. So, I'm just gonna standardize the loadout with two blocks on everyone else. And I'm gonna give myself a bank of Tempest. There's not enough Tempest to hand around to the rest of the team, but I'm not sure if I should trust my teammates with a Tempest anyway, so I'm just leaving them with a the default Rock Eye loadout. I mentioned already I don't like Rock Eye, so whatever. I'm gonna start the mission now. I order wing, you are cleared to take off. Kappa wing, you have clearance. Zeta wing, go. Oh, by the way. Notice how Alpha wing, go. Notice how Kappa 3 here, who I'm targeting and looking at, crashed into the Aquatane a few times before taking off, and if you remember in the mission briefing, we're supposed to be following Zeta. He's going in the opposite direction. Is he drunk or something? He, he flew around like he was drunk, by crashing around like that. Alpha, form up on Zeta. Follow Zeta 1's lead to the waypoints. Okay, Alpha, target my fighter and try to keep up. Boost your engine power and be ready to hit your burners because we're gonna get through this one fast and clean. Good luck, good. pilots. Keep a tight formation and look out for each other. Let's all get home alive. Oh, by the way, I know it's a little bright, and this is a Nebula mission, so it's supposed to be, um... It's supposed to look like this on purpose, so I'm gonna darken the HUD a bit, just so it's more visible. Hold on, these are a little bit more dark. Sorry about this. I don't wanna be completely black, but... Hey, okay, that works. How are we supposed to get a visual confirmation? I can't see a thing in this mess. Rather be fighting the NTF if you ask me. I never signed on for hunting Sheevans. Don't kid yourself. We're the ones being hunted, pilot. Command should shut down that portal and send the Aquitaine back to Deneb. We've got no business being out here. If command needs your opinion, they'll promote you to Admiral. Now shut up and focus. So we're just wandering out here. There are long breaks. report in. Sorry, interrupted again. This is IOTA-1. Sensors are picking up Zilch command. We're flying blind out here. Alpha-2 here. Nothing to report. This is Zeta-1. All clear. Now, wait a minute. Someone's missing. Kappa Wing, what's your status? Over. Kappa Wing, this is Allied Command. Please respond. Huh, Kappa's not responding. Iota Wing, investigate Kappa's last waypoint. The ionized field is interfering with our transmission. Kappa 3 was drunk, but what about the rest of Kappa Wing? Were they drunk too? Either way, I'm sorry about this mission. The Nebula missions are supposed to have low visibility like this on purpose. It's this part of the game. I can't do anything about that. However, about the mission itself, this is one of those missions where there are long breaks between action. I, I don't remember if I already mentioned this, but I'm mentioning it again if I did. We are just on a routine patrol, but like I said, there's always something out there waiting for us. It's not always just that simple. So let's just keep going and wait for it. There we go. Music's picking up. I'm picking up something on sensors. I can't get a lock. You got a lock now. They see me, I see them. 